The RA got sent off to the paint shop. The E91 is still not complete. What is the E91 doing? Still not complete. Let's go ahead and get working on it. So what you guys saw in the last video was the E91 pretty much looking 99% complete other than the front bumper, but there was still so many things we needed to get done. For example, these little side markers over here, to buy gloss black ones, they're about 100 to 150 bucks. I decided just to wrap them, and I think they came out pretty insane for the money. I think the wrap literally cost me like $5 a piece to wrap each one. I think that's definitely well worth the money so we knocked out these two bad boys in gloss black and the next thing i wanted to do um is just start working on the bumper this footage right here came from the footage when i actually lost the audio from the last video in the r8 um so this footage as you guys can see there was something going on with the camera that day i ended up just reformatting the camera and everything is gravy in the navy uh, but yeah we started working on the bumper this was one of the hardest bumpers mainly because it needed a lot of prep on it and also it has a lot of those aggressive uh, angles on it so basically uh yeah we had to do a bunch of overlays we got all the overlays done um, and it's now just a time lapse because there's so much more that needs to get wrapped on this bumper. And once we actually completed the bumper, we noticed right before we put it on, the fender started to have some issues. Now, this is a common sign of basically not getting all the air bubbles out and uh, letting it sit outside in the heat. So basically, uh, yeah, we have to redo this entire fender and that kind of stuff really sucks. So we peeled up the whole fender, put on a new sheet and just started going at it. I really wanted to just get this car done. It was so annoying that we literally just had a bumper to do and then we had to do the fender. Long story short, we knocked out the fender. Um, and then the last piece was the grills. Now we had these ugly grills. Um, they were, the paint was defective and you know they have like the M3 stuff and their F chassis style I like the OEM ones like these chrome ones down here so I decided to go ahead and just take apart the chrome ones and wrap them and I think they came out pretty sick let me know guys down below Quick pause for today's partner, Electron. Electron's been a company I've been using for, I don't know, I mean, not, not too long, maybe like five or six months, but I got their level three charger, I believe. I believe it's called the level three charger. And I've been using this bad boy nonstop. I have this thing hooked up and it's super easy to install. You literally just connect it to a, just a normal 240 volt. You guys can see it right back over there. And that bad boy basically allows me to charge my i3 in a couple hours, like fully charge the i3, a hundred mile range. And like, maybe I think, honestly, I think my best was like, like honestly, three or four hours. Like it was really, really, really quick. So every time I use the i3, I don't really have to worry about, oh my God, I'm almost out of range. I'm gonna have to come back home and have to charge and have to wait till the next day to actually be able to use it. I'm able to use this car multiple times a day up to, honestly, if I charge it every three or four hours, I could probably even get 200 to 250 miles out of that thing per day's use if I really wanted to, but I don't use the i3 that much. Now, because the i3 only has a hundred mile range, uh, sometimes I don't do a round trip of a hundred miles. Sometimes I actually go 70 to 80 miles somewhere and then I kind of I'm kind of like there and I have to use the gas to actually get me back home uh, because mine's is the Rex model and that's why I went ahead and picked up this bad boy this bad boy is a level one but also a level two charger on the go you guys can check it out it has a super sick box and I can leave this bad boy in the front we have your normal charger right oh no this is the normal one so this is the normal one that plugs into your normal outlet makes it a level one and this one plugs into your 240 volt that makes it a level two so this you'll get about five miles per hour roughly and this one you'll get like 20 to 30 mile charge per hour which is the main reason honestly i actually got this kit and in less than 30 seconds plugging it into any outlet like i said a 120 or a 240 and just like that guys we are charging now obviously i have the level 3 electron charger for the house but this charger is gonna be absolutely perfect when taking it to a friend's house and with this 21 foot cable i'm literally able to charge my car outside of somebody's house i don't have to tell them to make room in the garage i can literally just pull up on their driveway plug in the car i can even use this and plug it outside on some outside outlet 
plug it into my car on their driveway and just charge it. So yeah, this charge is definitely gonna be my go-to charger when I'm on the go. And if you guys have an EV, I definitely recommend checking out Electron again for the level three chargers and their level ones and level twos. They're all very convenient and they're very nice and they're very easy to install. You don't have to hire any electricians for any of this stuff. This is all just pretty much plug and play. Now without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop back into our gas guzzlers. And a few days later, we are finally gonna be starting to assemble the inside of the E91 M3. But unfortunately, um, I'm starting to run into some issues with the actual headliner that we actually got redone for the E91 M3. So as you can see with this headliner, unfortunately, it is peeling up from everywhere. I've actually had them redo this headliner as well. I think just the glue that they're using is just not working with this, either the material or the headliner itself. Not really too sure. I'm not a professional when it comes to wrapping headliners, but long story short, it is literally peeling again in all kinds of different angles. And you know, this is the second time in a few months. I do not want to put it inside the car or at least fix it, put it inside the car and then have it peeling again. Uh, removing an E91 headliner is not the funnest thing in the world. So I don't want to do this job twice if I don't have to. So I'm actually going to head down to pick a pull right now. Um, I found this E91 at a pick and pull. We're going to try to see if we can steal that headliner. But before actually heading to pick and pull, I decided to install the Keys Motorsports fire extinguisher. I really wanted to be safe with this car, especially it's gonna be more of a longer drive right here. And just in case anything happens to this build, I do not want all my hard work going away. So having this fire extinguisher conveniently in the passenger location just gives me some peace of mind that, you know, I don't lose a year's worth of work in one day. This thing is looking mighty fine. All right guys, we are at pick and pull location number two. Hopefully they got what we need. This is the next day and we are officially back home with the E91 and guess what guys? We finally have the headliner in the E91 M3. Honestly, I've been enjoying driving this car behind the scenes. It is such a blast, mainly because it's something that I built from the ground up. This is a car I can literally say that I've built from literally the bare metal, bare bone, and now it's something that looks absolutely amazing. As much as I love the R8, as much as it's my dream car, this car has way more sentimental value just because it's something that I actually built from a guy that started with no family background in cars and as somebody that knew nothing about cars, I'd say maybe six, seven years ago, all of a sudden I've built a car from the ground up. Now I still have much more to learn, like building the internals of engines and stuff like that, maybe upgrading the internals or repairing like, you know, bent rods or whatever it may be. But long story short, I am proud of my progress and I am proud of my creation. I mean, just look at that. I cannot wait to get that YouTube plaque of this car made. For those of you guys who purchased merch in the past, I'm gonna be making that YouTube plaque that I'm gonna be taking with this car 
car everywhere I go. So any car meets that this car attends, I'm gonna have the plaque right over here to shout out to those of you guys who supported this build. But yeah, guys, oh my God. At this point, we're not really done. We're far from done, actually. We still have pieces like the inner fender liner over here for the rear wheels that I need to put in ASAP. We still have the inner plastic pieces that I need to go over here. And we still actually have the M door seals that we actually need to put over here. Not to mention that we still have some parts of the headliner that's not actually on the car right now. We have the A pillars missing, the B pillars. We have the sun shades, the, the, the actual handles on the roof. And honestly, we still have a lot of little things more to do to this car. But hey, a build is never really complete. But in the meantime, I at least want to see this interior fully put together one color or another. I did leave the black dome light because I think the black dome light does look a lot better. I might actually put everything else in black and see how it is the, the gray with the black two-tone. We'll see how that kind of goes. If we like that, we might rock that. But literally the only thing I have is black pieces. I pretty much threw out all of the gray pieces or sold some of the gray pieces. So long story short, I think we're stuck with black everything else on the roof. So I guess we'll see how that goes. And finally, guys, we have the full interior together. Now, as far as the headliner goes, I don't really know how I feel about it too much with the whole black and gray. I'm more of an OE guy, and it just doesn't look OEM. I did actually found that I have these two visors in gray, and I also have this in gray, so we will swap that out eventually. I just kind of put that off to the side. But we still need the A pillars, B pillars, handles, and a bunch of other little things um, that will pretty much make the entire headliner gray and OEM. So that being said, I'm not actually going to put in that gray stuff just yet, just because it's still not not going to be complete. I might as well have some black accents all the way around. At least it's like matching. We have some black here. All the accent pieces will be black and then the headliner itself will be gray. And then eventually when I can actually get all the little pieces in gray, we'll do the whole headliner in gray. At least it's matching, but I really wish it was all black, but it is what it is. One day, mark my words, guys, we're going to find an M Sport wagon and we will take literally every single piece of that headliner and put it into this car. But till that day comes, uh, we're still trying to piece together this wagon. So this right here is every single plastic piece we need to actually start assembling the trunk. The trunk has a bunch of plastics from the bottom to the glass and all that stuff. So we need to start assembling all of that. I really hope I know how to do this because I haven't done this since I actually started parting out the car four or five months ago. So, ooh, fingers crossed. And then right over there, I threw over the gate is the fender linings we need on both sides of this car. So we have the two fronts on there, but the two rears are not on there. I want to go ahead and throw them on. Hopefully the fitment will be perfect because as you guys know, custom bumper, custom quarters. I really hope everything fits perfectly. Everything lines up. We can screw it all in. And then on this side right over here, the dust shield is rubbing against the road 
motor. So I am hearing a little bit of scraping noise. So while we're in there, I'm gonna go ahead and try to push back that dust shield. That should fix that issue as well. And then guys, that's pretty much all pieced together. I absolutely love this badge right here. To think that this car at one point was a 328 and now it is a full blown M3 guys. That is crazy. So now that we have the full interior done, the exterior done, I wanna go ahead and at least put in these wheel guards. I'm really hoping they're gonna fit. I guess we'll know when we actually test fit them. Without further ado, let's go ahead and pop this bad boy off and get those things in. And just like that, guys, we knocked out both sides of the wheel wells. We completed the whole interior, pretty much finished the entire car. At least for the V1 version, this car is officially 100% buttoned up. I don't think we have anything disconnected at this point. We have the entire interior together. We have the whole engine bay together. We have the entire undercarriage, the wheels, the suspension. Every little piece that needs to be on this car is on this car right now. So that is honestly insane. So here's a short cinematic of the V1 E91 M3 2007. <laughs> see it looks amazing but at the same time it needs a lot of work and that's why I decided to do a v1 version and a v2 version the v2 version of this car is gonna be built over time on this channel um so I just wanted to at least have a finished product which this is and then over time we're working on some other builds like the r8s or some other special builds we'll be able to modify this slowly but also perfect it slowly and just do it right without rushing the build the main reason I wanted to get this thing together so I can actually start taking it some meat you guys can actually see this car hopefully when I start the business up this car will be there at the business for you guys to see as well and i'm happy it's officially complete for being a v1 version i'm gonna say v1 a million times because the v2 version guys the lime rock with all the other upgrades i'm gonna do to this car is gonna look absolutely insane let me know down below if you have any questions with the e91 m3 like for example how long it took me to build this or how much it cost me to build this what i recommend anyone building this thing um i can have videos on all of that stuff in the near future so make sure let me know down below if you guys have any questions about this build but without further ado guys i love you all so much remember to stay on boss see y'all the next one peace out